already. Exactly. Alright. Do for us? Do it cool. Do it cool. Alright, so, so what is what's the point of that? What is he what is he what is that about? Great God, yeah. Great God. Bring glory to God. Yeah, he's praying, he's praying, and he's trying to bring glory to God. Everything does. It's like I just said, yeah, exactly. Um, and and we can do that as well. You know, we can live for something meaningful like that as well. When, and whenever in English class, in Spanish class, um, at the skate park, uh, on the uh, snowboarding hill, wherever we find ourselves, we can bring glory to God. Read another uh, little quote for him. It says, My dad always tells us that faith is like a muscle. You trust God in small things, and when he comes through, your muscle grows. This enables you to trust God for the bigger things. In fact, all things. So just thinking about trusting God, are you are you willing to trust God that He's that when you invest your back's gold, your gifts, your talents, your knowledge about Jesus, that He's going to make a return, that He's going to double your efforts there, that He's going to make it uh, fruitful, is it, and that it's worthwhile, that it's it's worth doing, it's worth your energy and your time. That's trusting God. That's saying, God, I know you're your God, and I know that this is worthwhile. So I want to challenge you guys to trust him in that way. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart is working for the Lord and not for men. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. As though working for the Lord and not for men. Whether you're working for your dad's business or right, any of that, you can do that for the Lord. So, yeah. <laughs> you're the customer you interact with, you can interact with in a Christ like manner. I don't want to interact with the customer, so it's all good. It's all good. So, maybe the way, maybe they're co workers. Yeah. You know, you can be, uh, be like Christ more. So, so what? You know, God's given us these talents. What am I supposed to do with it? Like, what does that matter? You know, why, why should I actually do anything with these uh, talents God's given me? It's given to me. Why don't I just use them however I feel like? You know, Liz asked the question last time, last time we met. Do you live what you believe? And that's, I've really been thinking about that since she taught. Do you live what you believe? And the genuine believer in Christ should be investing in the others, in others, the gifts that have been given by God. The genuine believer should be investing in others, the gifts that are given by God. Like those, like those bags of gold. You've been given these things. You've been given salvation by God. Use it. Share it. Use that. Use the skateboard. Use the crochet. Use all the cooking. Use, use all those things. Use that kind heart that God's given you. And another proof of how much God wants us to be using those gifts is in James 2. It says, What's good? What is good, my brothers? The man claims to have faith but has no deeds. Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well. Keep warm and well fed. It does nothing about its physical needs. What good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. But some will say, if you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there's one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish man. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous 
what he did when he saw this, uh, offered his son Isaac on the altar. You see that faith and actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. Faith without works is dead. If you say you believe in Christ, but you don't, you don't live it when you leave these walls. That's a dead faith. That's an empty faith. So you have to ask yourself: Are you going to have a dead faith or a vibrant faith? You know, look at these uh, look at these leaders in the room. Look at Tad and Henry, Emily and Matt. You know, these people are. Katie, sorry, you went right in. Uh, <laughs> and they, these leaders are investing their gold, their precious time, their precious energy into you guys. Betsy, sorry. <laughs> They're investing their time in you. They're, they're this precious knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think you should take uh, take heed of that and take notice of that. And do that in your own communities. Do that in your own, uh, your friends and your family and your coworkers and all those things, all those groups. The question you, ask, you have to ask yourself, do I trust God that this investment to share my faith, to show kindness and compassion to others, will have a return? Do I trust God in that? Do I trust God with a risk? Yeah, it's a risk. If you go and you share your faith with somebody, if you uh, act differently, if you're not out, you know, uh, drinking or, uh, you know, doing drugs or you're not, I mean, just, and the, the myriad of other things, you can just, you know, speak at me, like, you know, when you, you see that person over there that's not cool and you just, you know, make jokes to your friends. When you don't do that, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, it might make you, uh, it might separate you. But do you trust that doing that is worth it? Taking that time to invest and to not do something hurtful or to do something and stick time? But that is worthwhile. It says, First Corinthians uh, chapter 20, 10, starting verse 10. My grace, by the grace of God, has given me. I laid the foundation as a wise builder, and someone else built on it. Each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is uh, Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, copper, stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light, the day of the Lord, Jesus come again, will bring it to light, it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what, that, if what has been built survives, the builder will receive reward, but if it is burnt up, the builder will suffer a loss, but yet will be saved, even though only escaping through the flames. So, what are you building? What, what, are you, what is your life building? Are you building up something that's going to last? Are you burning something that you're building something that's just going to be burned up? It's not going to last. It's not going to have any kind of significance on eternity. So what's your life building? Are you going to be just barely, are you someone that just scrapes by, escaping through the flames, and uh, just barely, you know, makes it to heaven, kind of just, just barely gets through? You know, I mean, your work was just burned up all around you and was worthless and didn't have any kind of significance. If you're not pursuing the Father's work, you may want to ask yourself, do you truly believe in Christ? Are you truly saved? Maybe something worth, worth thinking about. You know, and it sounds harsh, but sometimes the Bible is harsh. What kind of work are you doing? When your when you work's testing will survive. some truths here. God loves you more than you can possibly imagine. You know, in the story of the prophet's son, he's, he's running to him, he's back his arms around, putting a ring on his finger, putting a robe on him. He loves you. He loves you with that kind of love, even though 
uh, you betrayed his confidence, you know, and, and sinned against him, rebelled against him, he's still well, willing to welcome you back like that. Uh, you forget your sin. It's removed from you as far as the east is from the west. You can never, uh, as if you start walking east, you can never, you'll never start walking west. It's, it's completely removed. But God expects you to live what you believe. So, okay, you know, I've heard, I heard what you said, but what am I supposed to do, to do now? Well, now what? Now what do I do? Well, you have, you have this goal. You have this good news. Good news of Christ. The ability to help others. You guys actually use that faithfully. Like, first two servants, faithful. That was one of the key words you guys brought out. Faithful. But the gift you've been given. And, and know that you're not alone in this. God's with you. You're dwelt by the Holy Spirit. Tanner, you're dwelt by the Holy Spirit. And He's with you. And, and it's not a joke. If you're a believer in Christ, you have the Holy Spirit, and he's, he's there to help you. He's there to help you when you want to share faith. He's there when you're when you're at the skate park and you and you want to tell them, you know, share with Christ, or you just want to be kind, help somebody out when they take the digger, or when you just want to say, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to laugh and you just totally eat it and you're on your, on your butt or on your face or whatever, you know? Um, that's, you can show that love of Christ. You didn't see it. God's there to empower you. And yeah, it's risky. It's scary. But are you going to trust in God that he'll be there with you? And that's a good investment, and it's worth your time and energy to do. We should be trying our best. We all fall short. But we should be a different person inside the church than we are out, outside the church. We shouldn't be all about that here and then just forget about it when we're out there. You know, are you just going to be the person that's, you know, uh, in your school and, okay, everybody's going this way, okay, I'm going to go this way, I'm going to do what they're doing. I'm going to just going to follow them. I'm just going to, if they do this, then, okay, I'm going to go over here and do that too. Or are you going to say, you know what, that's wrong. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to make fun of that person. I'm going to go this different way. I'm going to stand up for something right. You know, if that's the way that our heroes are in our movies, we always respect when somebody's going to stand up for truth, stand up for, for what's right, and go a different way. interesting in high school, and I remember for myself too, we want so much to impress and be accepted and be welcomed by our friends. And 99.9% .9 of the time, those people are so trying, trying so hard to impress are going to have no impact on the rest of your the majority of your life. It's people that you want that acceptance from so badly and you want to be part of the group, it's not going to matter for the majority of your life. So, don't do what's you know what's wrong in your heart. Live for Christ. God's giving you those bags of gold. He's giving you that treasure, that His treasure in our salvation, and the gifts that we have. The salvation is it's for this life that we have a relationship with Christ, that we can know Him, and He's there with us through all our struggles. And also salvation for eternity. Are you going to bury that in the ground like the last servant did? Are you going to hide it away? Or are you going to share it and invest it in others? Use it. Share it. Create, create a great return. That treasure. So a big idea is one thing I want to leave you with. One just big idea. Don't waste your gift. Don't waste the gold. Invest in others. 